We now meet with Morten Lund. Okay. He's a Danish entrepreneur and seed investor who has co-founded more than 50 high-tech startups. His numerous investments include an early stage investment into the communication company Skype. Mr. Lund, what kind of playing field has the recent economic turmoil presented for entrepreneurial startups? Well, I think it's hard to say if, if it has changed anything in, in the playing field, but the thing is that all the, all the pussies have been gone back to uh, safe jobs and there's, a very, there's very few who dare to start something in this, in this climate, despite the fact that it's actually, if you look over history, this is the best climate to start a company ever. I mean, when, when, the, when, when there's a recession, you can, if you have a company in the sector of saving money or cost cutting or helping, I mean, technology is really now, you can really, you can get very fast to market and you can get big decisions from extremely big companies if you can show them a short term business plan where they can save some money. Because everybody is, I mean, to, to save cash, I mean, clean up after all the, I mean, the crazy spoiled years. Is this the reason for this kind of counter cyclical success of entrepreneurial startups? Maybe, but again, yeah, I don't feel smart enough to admit at all to, to, to talk about that or understand it. But my feel, my gut feeling yeah. is that I see the, I see the most aggressive climate since after the last bubble, when we started some crazy companies as well. And now we will I mean, do some really aggressive stuff again. I mean, game changing, disruptive stuff that will, I mean, yeah, that, that will that will change some of the paradigms that, that we know by now. And and one of I mean one of the things where I'm very active now as a chairman is a it's a company called Trade Shift where we'll basically reinvent electronic invoicing because it's so weird that it costs a lot of money to use real EDI networks. Why not give it free so that the little guy? I mean, if you're doing a little consulting job for a friend, you want to invoice him a thousand bucks. I mean, it's kind of weird that you take it from your computer into an envelope, transport it, and then he opens the envelope and types it into another computer. Why isn't it just? And the same with PDF. I mean, he has to retype the PDF. It's kind of whack. And stuff like that is getting enormous traction. It's an 11-month-old company, and we're raising money now at a $200 million evaluation. So th there's a lot of stuff to be done now. The work session is called Building is the Real Fun. Yeah. Is this the reason behind your numerous ventures? Yeah. I mean, I, I can barely, I mean, I can say I'm not here for the money because, I mean, I just spent all my money and went bankrupt and, and now I, I mean, I'll, I'll keep building. Of course, I mean, when it happened, I was not proud, but then I saw, okay, I can't stop doing this. And on the other hand, I couldn't get a job. Who, who the fuck should employ me? So I, this is what I do and I love it. Mr. Lund, you actively share your experiences of the more harsh sides of entrepreneurialism as well. So your investment in a heavily indebted Danish free newspaper forced you to declare bankruptcy in early 2009. Why is it crucial to address failure as a relevant dimension of entrepreneurial activity? I think that's. Um, I think it's very important when you look at. at if, if you if you look at uh, ventures and, and entrepreneurship as a casino, it's a very bad casino. With seven out of. 10 are failing but nobody says that when you have government programs be an entrepreneur entrepreneurship should be promoted I mean who's I mean who's actually picking up all the seven out of ten guys who fail I mean get more or less crazy they get depressed and so I think it's very important to be upfront that what what are the risks here and therefore I think it's also important to say okay when I fail well, I mean when I succeed I tell the whole world hey I'm the king of the world I can do whatever I want I can, you know, buy a jet or whatever, but you also have to say the other, see the other side because it's very, it's 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 kind of tough to be an entrepreneur. I mean, you have to have an enormous self confidence and you have to really keep your drive up, and therefore I think it's very important that you also tell about the, the dark side, and that it's a big dark side. Mr. Lund, thank you very much for these insights. You're welcome.